that builds the essential familiarity from which trust is bred. And when you have that trust, they are going to be much more willing to buy from you. All right, hey guys, we have the wonderful Richard Moore with us. So Richard Moore is a sales and business coach with over 16 years of experience. You know, his clients range from startups to businesses. He has been in Forbes, Influencer, and Huffington Post. So I love Richard because I love watching his weekly lives on his free Entrepreneur Business Live Facebook group, which has about 4,000 members. And he's also the founder and creator of the Entrepreneur Business Live event, a monthly event uh, across the globe, you know, we were just talking about Melbourne and it's in New York, Barcelona, Toronto, and of course, London with world-class speakers like Claude Silva, Mark Matry, and you know, it's a powerful networking event with a focus on building community. So Richard, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Wow, that's one hell of an introduction. That's really <laughs> kind of you. And uh, yeah, it's, it's nice to finally do this. We've been connected for ages. Yeah, and um, I do love all your content on LinkedIn and it's very actionable. And, you know, the authentic, authenticity on your content makes me feel that I really know you, even though this is the first call that we jumped on. And I might add that, you know, people call you the James Bond, people call you the, the Sir. And, you know, how, how do I introduce Richard Moore? Is I say that Richard Moore is the kingsman of LinkedIn because he's sharp, uh, very neat, and he's sort of like very kingsman-ish, like kingsman the movie. So yeah, that's, that's another thing I would add. I, I feel like I'm, I bring this kind of English element to uh, an otherwise very uh, predominantly American uh, community, don't you think? Yeah, it's very predominantly American, and you are, you are as British as it goes. <laughs> your accent <laughs> and your content. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, so I, I did in my introduction talk about like entrepreneur business life. So, can you tell us a bit, you know, tell my audience a bit more about entrepreneur business life? You know, what are your goals? What are your visions? And what is the format? Absolutely. So um, I wanted to take networking events deeper um, because I had been to so many where they were very awkward. And I'm good at going up to people and, and communicating things, but I found that there's a lot of kind of standing around and people not kind of getting warmed up. And I thought the problem is that people are shoving a load of um, randoms in a room and hoping that everything will kind of gel and work. And that's why you get uh, the whole, here's my business card, let's connect another day when it's safer behind a keyboard. So instead, what I've done is I've worked very hard to build communities and then I give them an event. So I was just on the, on the phone to um, the host in Melbourne uh, and the idea there perfectly summarizes this, which is that they're going to know so many people who are coming to the event. So the networking event, uh, it, it starts with people who know each other. But to kind of answer your question directly, the whole point of Entrepreneur Business Live is to serve on three levels. Mm -hmm. One is to teach or, or to give practical advice from speakers to those in the room. The second level is with that one event is to also serve and help and, and um, uh, pr pass on value to people who are in a wider audience, which is why we stream to the Entrepreneur Business Group on Facebook, where there are people from all over the world that will watch the live stream. But the third level is to serve those who don't even know that the events exist. And that's why each event has a charity partner. So we will donate to a local charity each time we run an event. Um, and uh, uh, for instance, the Melbourne event is working with clown doctors, with the people who go around hosp hospitals and help children feel good if they're ill. And don by donating to them, some people will benefit who didn't even know we existed. So it's nice having that three levels. And my vision ultimately, if I'm being really honest, that the vision I have, Bob, is to wake up one day and check my phone, for instance, and say, oh, look, there's an entrepreneur business live in, you know, Rio de Janeiro, for instance, and, and it, for, it, for it to kind of run on its own without me having to take it uh, to each, each location. So it feels like that's starting to happen already, which is really exciting. Yep, that's, that's amazing. And, you know, shout out to people you were talking in Melbourne, Diana, Tima, and lots of people. And, yes. and the, um, I admire your success, you know, of being able to organize entrepreneur business life around the world. And uh, you, because I think you build it on the back of LinkedIn connections, you know, people like yeah. Diana, people like Judy Fox, um, you network and build a relationship on, on LinkedIn. 
So yeah. my, my question, you know, to educate my audience is how do you build all these deep relationships at scale on LinkedIn? So on LinkedIn, yeah, that's the question. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I, I get asked this one a lot, uh, especially by companies I go to coach on using LinkedIn. And the answer um, is very obvious, but people don't want to hear it because they want to hear that there's a hack or something like that. You work your face off and all the, all the spare moments of the day you have um, of your working day are spent doing this. And so as an example, if I'm walking my children to school in the morning, once I've done that, I will voice message my way home. So I'll be leaving messages with people in the community, just checking in, seeing how they're doing, and basically staying tight with that community. You've got to keep those plates spinning. There's no, um, there's no workaround. You can't use a bot for this. This is showing up for people. Um, you've mentioned Judy Fox there, who's famous for voice messages. And she and I will voice message each other almost daily. And it's to um, keep that bond tight, you know. I, I recognize uh, when you show up on my, on my content and I do my best to show up for you as well. And I think just as much as is possible, there, there's no way in which you can move away from that. Community is king, as I've said recently. And so you, you have to look at where you've got those spare moments. Or, and one thing I try and do is be calculated. So being practical for you here now, uh, I would often do something like 45 minutes set aside and it will be checking in with anyone who sent me a message and, and firing something else out to them as well. But you know, when there's content going out, it's not about firing out content for the sake of it. It's about it being an opportunity um, to give the community a talking point. And so I, I, I like to um, uh, you know, have that as like a, the, the water cooler where we can all talk as well. So it's a, a nice place to go and engage with people. But the short version is, the short answer is it's every day, just manually and individuals are working with each person and sending messages and catching up and it's a lot of work. That's the only way to do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of people underestimate, you know, with digital, social and of course LinkedIn, you know, yeah. it's the, the principles of, you know, building a relationship still applies, you know, yeah. like basically it's connecting. Do you know what it is? It's the same as the offline world. It's literally no different. And we're all really good at it. We've just got to take cues from there. So if you meet someone in, in real life and you never bother speaking to them again, you can't expect much, right? But if yeah. you build a relationship by showing up again and again, that's how best friends are made because you hang out more and that's what you've got to do. Yeah. And yeah, it's just done at scale because now you can message anyone and talk to anyone like yourself yeah. in different parts of the world. Yeah, and it can be very efficient and you can get, get around a lot more people. That's absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I really love your content. And you know, every Monday, you know, you go on Entrepreneur Business Live. And the recent, it's a, it's a great time to interview you because your recent live was epically the bomb. Because you talked about, uh, what was it, content posting? What's, uh, posting strategy, yes. Uh, posting, posting strategy. And one of the, the, my question to you, which will lead to your, your point is, um, the consensus out there is that LinkedIn algorithm is not working that great this year. And, you know, from my experience and a lot of people's, a lot of other people's experience on LinkedIn is that, oh, algorithm sucks, they say it doesn't work. But you have right. an opinion, on, you have an advice on that that is absolutely gold. And can you explain more about content and, you know, building a community? Yeah, let me, let me, this is important because it's very topical. Um, yeah. The thing is, LinkedIn's really glitchy at times. There have been some people I know who have taken screenshots of it where the number of views on their content, <laughs> I'm laughing because it's hilarious, the number of views on their content has been in a negative number. That, that's how weird it is sometimes. And, um, you know, when they launched their new document thing, they, you, you'd get like 200,000 views of a piece of content. It'd be insane. Uh, and then two days later, it dropped to 50,000 on the same bit of content. It's very weird. So the algorithm is quite hard to crack, but the fundamentals are always true. If you are regularly on people's radar, so in their messages or in, in public content engaging with them, then you will be showing up on their timeline. And if you post regularly enough, you'll do okay. 
it is wrong, in my opinion, because a lot of people give the advice, don't worry about the algorithm. And I think it's wrong to ignore the algorithm because, for instance, you know, you need to think about certain things about posting. For instance, when is my audience awake? Well, I should post then, you know, rather than what's convenient for me, it's when the audience is awake. Um, and also, I should let people know that this, this piece of content's gone out if it's really relevant to them because it's building a community and generating engagement. And so you should do two or three meaningful tags or DM someone and say, hey, Bob, there's this piece of content out and it's about X. And I know you do that. I just thought you'd be interested in seeing it or even shout them out in the body of the, of the text because that kind of starts the process because it's very it's very cute to say, well, don't worry about the algorithm, just post it and get on with it. But, but that doesn't make sense because if you do worry about the algorithm and you do pay a bit of attention to it, well, then your content will do better and serve more people. Um, but yeah, it is glitchy, but I've been doing fine, you know, and that there are some posts that bomb, then the next day you do well. So it swings and roundabouts. And the reality is it doesn't really matter um, if you do a bit crap on one of your posts, because the next one might be fine. What you've got to do is keep showing up to the community with value if you have it. Yeah. So one of the key things in terms of the algorithm, I think everyone knows this, is the level of engagement. So perhaps the engagement, some say in the first hour, is yeah. critical for it yeah. for a post to go wide, to go to get a good reach. Definitely. So I've I've seen a lot of your posts that get very good engagement. So what, what is the strategy of, of building a good uh, level of engagement on LinkedIn? Yeah, good question. So, um, you know, you can post natively to LinkedIn with a scheduler now, something like Hootsuite. However, I do it manually because what I, the, one of the most important parts of my strategy is that I babysit my content for the first half hour or so. So I will put it up there because LinkedIn needs to see not just the engagement, but engagement, as you rightly said, right away. So if people start to write comments, like last night's um, post or yesterday's post was really quick out of the blocks. So as everyone's commenting, I want to be in there giving it, uh, like validating their comments and writing something back as well because you're, you're telling the algorithm, you know what, this content's really popping, so let's give it some more juice. And what you're trying to do is validate that content in that first hour so that LinkedIn unlocks the gates to the second connections because that's when you know you're winning when the second connections start showing up because it, it gets shown to a very small portion of your first connections to begin with uh, just to kind of test it but when it hits the second ones you know you're winning and um, so yeah that, that's kind of an important part of the strategy is to sit with it it might be in another window while I'm working on something else but babysit the um, the, uh, the content for a little bit Post and run is a bad idea because at the very least, that's a bit, un that's a bit uncool to the um, community that's shown up for you, right? Yeah, I, I love the level of engagement on the post. So th this, this is my thoughts on this. And, and this is my experience as a person consuming your content as well. Because yeah. of the level of engagement that you put in, the level of time that you dedicate to engage the audience. Yeah. Um, so wherever you post something, you know, people are excited to engage with it. So I can see some of your posts get a few hundred likes. So the key here is, you know, some people like, like in your recent life, you said content is really not king. The, the key here is to build that community, you know, so when you post something, you don't have to rely on tagging or, you know, or rely on, you know, just commenting. But when yeah. you post something, people are generally excited because you yeah. have built a strong community. Yeah, you're right. And, and the post before last, um, uh, the, the one that was content is not king. And just for the record, what I wasn't saying was that content doesn't matter. What I was saying it's not yeah. as, as important as, as community. Um, th that one, the, the, the way I test if a post is doing really well in terms of engagement is if you look at the comments, people aren't writing nice post, Richard. They're writing paragraphs you know, and they're giving like a meaningful answer and they're, they're stopping and thinking, I'm going to consume this content and then write something like an anecdote or something. And I remember that piece of content, I was like, it was like an hour in the morning I had to spend with it because there was like 70 comments to go through. But, you know, people might think like, like that's a huge amount of time, but the, that's worth it because then the reach is bigger and it means that more people check out my stuff 
So then more people go and buy things or more people ask me to do stuff and it perpetuates the whole thing. That's content marketing done well, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I personally, your, your content on Monday, uh, your life on Monday was a wake up call to me. I, I like yourself post three or four times a week and not right. a lot of content gets a lot of reach. And I was thinking, yeah, maybe Richard is right. So what I did was, um, following what you said on your life, I said, maybe I should really engage. So instead, like your, your style is when somebody comments, you would generally put an insightful comment with a question. You know, you'd say, hey, uh, but so I had a post about, you know, you should focus on one thing. I had a post where I interviewed Nathan Lakka. Yeah. What I did was I went to the likes and saw like there were like five people liking it. And like you said, liking it, people actually taking the time to like your content. Actually mm. your content. It's a big deal. It's not just the like, you're right. <laughs> And what I did was I tagged everyone who, some people who liked, and I said, hey, yes. what is your focus at the current moment? So that actually got an extra 200 reach. Uh, so one Good. of my posts that I did the same thing actually got extra 400 reach because I tagged people and asked them questions pertaining the video. So it's that's amazing. amazing. Yeah. And, you know, and that's how I started. Like, like, if anyone dared give me a like, when I first started, like 2015 on Facebook, I would send them a message saying, I just wanted to say thank you so much for the like, that's really kind. How are you doing? Start a conversation. And because of that, then Facebook is like, I'm going to show this person your next post and your next post. And now you're building momentum. And uh, then next time you get more than a like, you get a comment. So it's just funny, you know, because people want all this engagement. But what you have to do is do the engagement first with the people that you want to engage with you. You have to, uh, the way I've put it in the past is you have to come down from your throne and go to them. And often what that really means is going to their content as well on their posts and commenting for them because you can't, it can't be all one sided. Everyone wants everyone to run at them, but it doesn't work like that. Yeah, that, that's amazing. And I hope I will see results and I <coughs> hope to engage with more people. And I hope I can dedicate the time to call, to engage like yourself. Well, do you know what? I, I, people worry, worry that it's a lot of time and they're like, you must be doing this all day. I, I don't. I'm running Entrepreneur Business Live and I also have a consultancy. I, I coach businesses on how to sell. And so I would say across the day, cumulatively, it's about an hour and a half that is spent on all this messaging. And I don't care what other people say. They have got time for it. Because I'm running the two businesses, I have children as well. And there's plenty of people who don't have children that like you. I have zero time, and I still find time for it. So it is possible, you know. If if I'm walking home from school uh, from a drop off, or if I'm making a cup of coffee, they are moments where I could choose to do something else. Fine, but I may choose at that moment to do some community work. Yeah. There, there's absolutely no excuse. Maybe I might not be able to do an hour and a half, but yeah. half an hour more makes a difference. You know, it just, does. Yeah. So just and, and get on with it. And it's like, it's like go fast. You know, that's why I use voice messages, Bob, instead of text. Yeah. That's my, cause text takes forever. When I voice, I can just speak and it's done and it's so much quicker and you get better engagement. Um, but I go, I'm not sitting there scrolling through timelines when I'm on social media. I'm, I'm, intentionally nailing uh, the community work so um it's uh, it's all very planned out i suppose yeah it's i i think we sh i should call it like intentional engagement <laughs> something like yes that. definitely yeah so so i um so richard you also have like a course recently launched on udemy so it's the basics of linkedin yeah. and uh um do so for my audience you know if you want to learn about linkedin now, Richard grew his audience from, you know, I think 400 and now you have like 10,000 followers now on LinkedIn. It was, it was 118 uh, <laughs> in March last year. I remember, I should have taken a photo of it or something, but I remember writing down 118 and, and now, yeah, it's so 10,000. I know some people would go way more than that, but I, I'd like to think from zero, we've done really well. Um, and that's the community thing, yeah. So, yeah. of course, it's from udemy.com. Udemy.com. And, and briefly, uh, I don't know if you're allowed to say this, uh, but briefly give a preview of the course so that I can promote this to my audience. So in the course, sure. you talk about the three C's approach. So what, what are the three yeah. C's? So the three C's are my formula that 
the nice thing about this, Bob, is that you can go to my LinkedIn profile and see that I'm not making it up. I've got results. So um, the three C's approach is um, content, connections, and community. And in that order of importance. So there are a number, it's a video course in each of the chapters. There's one on setting up the profile as well as yeah. the introduction and so on. But those three are about how you create content that's going to drive engagement about how you there's a special way in which i i connect with people and how i decide who i'm going to connect with it's very intentional it's not like i'll just hit connect on everyone it's done in a very important way um and then how the community is being built as well to drive meaningful engagement because ultimately the point of this is not just engagement it's conversions um and uh, and so so those three elements uh, I give treatment to in separate chapters and um, literally this morning uh, a woman from over in Sydney I think it was in Australia sent me a message on Instagram saying um, I can't hold my phone oh, let me hang on let me read it to you <laughs> it's quite nice just to prove I'm not making up so she's uh, Anastasia her name is she's just started on LinkedIn because and she bought the course and she wrote uh, where is she here she is she wrote, um, hey, Richard, I've been using your tips from the LinkedIn training and they've been working, big smiley face. I was nervous to tag people at post, in post at first, but I, was act I actually found um, that they were thankful for me inviting them into the discussion. Who, who knew? And then I checked out her post and she started to do really well. But every day people are getting great results because this formula is very simple and it's designed in a way that is streamlined enough you can get on with your work the rest of the day. You don't have to go all in on LinkedIn. Yeah, amazing stuff. So do check out uh, Richard's course on Udemy, you know, basics of LinkedIn. So I, I myself um, also run a consultancy like yourself and mm -hmm. I've got uh, amazing results from LinkedIn. I have clients around Asia because of LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah. Much more of an opportunity. So in terms of the three C's, the conversion part. So like a lot of people are on LinkedIn for leads, you know, for business opportunities. Yeah. So, how do people gen how does someone generate leads from LinkedIn? Yeah, obviously it depends what they're trying to sell and kind of on what level as well. But the reality is that 80% of all business to business leads are on LinkedIn. Basically anyone you're ever going to do business with is there. And so the the best the let me put it this way, the twenty nineteen way to do it is to um make sure that you are are building value and uh, there's a, a, an awful term called a value debt, which is where you give someone so much value, they feel they owe you something in return. Oh. And what they owe you is engagement. So they bother to show up for your content and things like that. But when someone's showing sufficient interest, um, you will get what's known as the cue. And the cue is usually a compliment. Like, I, you know, that's been really helpful. It's really made a big difference. Thank you so much for this. Um, and that's the point where you can say, right, well, well now let's convert. And so for someone like you as a consultancy, it's very simple for you at that point to say, well, let's hop on a call then. And they're always fine with doing it because they've come in your direction first. Um, mm. And I think that some people are, are very old school with LinkedIn and they will just you know, do the spam approach. But people are wise to that now and, and um, it's a bit boring. It doesn't really work. It's very inefficient. So um, far better is to give good reasons why potential customers might spend time with you. And so I, when I'm right putting out content, I always have as pure a signal as possible about the thing I do. So I talk a lot about sales and engagement and, and strategy in, in marketing because I'm really good at that and that's what people pay me for. And as a result, um, the right people gravitate to the content and some of them are keen enough that they then want to buy things. And, and it's, it's a nice organic way of doing it. It's certainly more fulfilling then cold calling people, which I've done as well in the past, but uh, I, I prefer this approach. Yeah, Am amazing stuff. I uh, absolutely love what you say, you know, like that's why I've been creating content. And, you know, I always ask someone who becomes a lead, you know, when did you first, what is the first content that you consume? Oh, yeah. you know, say I first saw your video in November or, you know, back last yeah. year. And it takes time. And you, but you know, that builds, that builds the essential familiarity from which trust is bred. 
And when you have that trust, they are going to be much more willing to buy from you. But also the familiarity means that if you do go on a consulting call or, or have a meeting or discuss potentially working together, um, their, their receptivity is really high because they feel like you, you know, you're a known quantity as opposed to someone who offers a service they need, but they don't know anything about. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, as a consultant and a lot of my audience are consultants as well. So, what, what are your sales strategies when it comes to being a consultant? You know, how do you get someone who is, who is cold, maybe consume your content, and to becoming your, maybe a consultant client? Yeah, um, be patient is, is really important. Not everyone wants to buy now, even though you want to sell now. And some people will convert like that, and some people will take six months to convert. That's the thing. And the thing to remember is that if you're patient and you stick with them, eventually they'll come around and buy. And I've had people I've known for years and they only just bought, you know, recently because it wasn't the right time for them. Some people take more warming up than others because they've had bad experiences, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe they don't trust people as much, or maybe they've got the right kind of, the, the kind of personality that isn't very action orientated. So don't cajole and pressure them, just stay with them and be that constant. The other thing I'd say is you better be good. In the words of Seth Godin, actually, good is bad. You should be great because everyone is good. But you need to be, there needs to be demonstrable evidence of, of ability. And that's you practicing what you preach. It is hilarious to me, hilarious when people talk about being a LinkedIn guru or a LinkedIn expert. And I always go, okay, let's go see them. It's like, but no one's interested in your stuff. So you're not. And, and so if you're going to be a great consultant, you need to be a practitioner starters. So you need to be doing it yourself. So I sell, and I, I, I coach an events company and I run an event company. So it helps that I can actually do it that way. Do you see what I mean? Rather than all theory. Yeah. Some people are great at reading books and giving out theory, but nothing beats having been in the trenches and because what people really want is for you to say, I've done that. And in that moment, here's the best strategy rather than I've read about that. Do you yeah. see the difference? So a great consultant is one who's got experience. Um, and the other thing I'd say as well is, is keep sharing um, evidence that what you're doing is, is of what you're doing. So kind of document that as well. And part of that um, will be collaborating with people um, like yourself, uh, or yeah. like with, with the three in Melbourne, because that helps lift you up. People yeah. advocate for you, and that really makes a big difference. You know, mm. having someone, uh, it, having Claude Silver from Vayner Media saying, <laughs> literally saying on a call like this, good for you. That's really, I'm really impressed with what you're doing. I'm like, oh, thank you so much. So it really makes a difference when someone says something like that. So you need to court people who are on a higher level as well. So I hope you have some good tips for you. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. So my, my second follow-up question to that is, you said you have to stay with a lead. Now, how do you stay in, in contact with a B2B lead? Do you send them email newsletters or do you constantly create content and you know, engage with them? What's your strategy? Well, let's presuppose you've qualified them. So they have the money and they're right. Uh, and you, yeah. you know, otherwise you're spending time with everyone and, and you, you're not kind of pruning those, that, that pipeline. <coughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's important to remember that um, if, you, if you stick them in an autoresponder and they technically receive content from you, that's not as much engagement as it could be. Stay close. Every month or so, ping them a message. And don't just say, how are you doing? Take 17 seconds, go to their content, have a look at what they've just been talking about and then mention that. So, you know, have they just done a TED talk recently? Ask them how it went. Have they just won a new com uh, client or received an award? Bring that up. Because what you're doing is you're, you're, you're coming back to them again with different reasons each time. Otherwise, you're a broken record and you sound like someone who's just trying to get them to give out money. Instead, show up for them like a friend would. A friend would shout and go, hey, I saw you did that thing, well done. Or, hey, I saw you going to that wedding, isn't that great? You know, whatever it might be. Just check them out first, then send them a meaningful comment. If you genuinely want to work with these people, you need to put a bit of effort into, you know, four seconds of research, just glance at their profile, it's worth doing. 
Yeah, that's that's amazing. That's the same process every time I want a new connection. I would send it yes. with a message. I loved your video mm -hmm. on this, this, this. Look, like yeah. love to be part of your network. So but even if it's an existing connection, you still do apply that each time because the world changes for them and they might have just yeah. done something interesting or or something bad might have just happened and, and you might be about to say something really silly unless you check that stuff. So the, the profile is their newsletter. Makes sense to see what's going on in their world before you send them another message. Yeah, that's, that's great, uh, great, great advice on, you know, for B2B marketers or anyone on LinkedIn. Thank so, you, yeah. So, so we'll, we'll wrap up in a bit, but one of the things that I love and I regularly am very active is the Entrepreneur Business Facebook group. And yeah. absolutely love that. So it's around right now about 3.7, uh, about 4,000 members. So can you share with uh, my audience, you know, how did you build such an engaging and, <coughs> and, and a big, uh, big group? So, uh, yeah, as a, it started in 2015. Yeah. And um, I learned a lesson very early that if you call a group a silly name, no one knows what it's about. So I called it Eight Step Startup Group because that was the name of my first course. And everyone's like, what well, the hell's Eight Step Startup? And also it wasn't found on, online. So I pivoted, it was probably 2017, I think it was. I changed it to the Entrepreneur Business Group. And I got the, I don't know how I managed it, I've got the URL as well. So it's facebook.com slash group slash entrepreneur business group, um, all one word, which means it's easily found. So every day I get dozens and dozens of people wanting to uh, uh, join who have um, found it organically. So I'm not like forcing people in, they all just find it themselves. And um, driving engagement is so much work and you know, you're doing well, you're doing all right if like one to 2% of the members are, are engaging in every post, you're doing well because uh, you know, if I look at some of the most engaging um, groups I'm, I'm part of, they, they're the same kind of numbers. It's very hard. Groups are a very passive thing for many people. So you have to drive really good conversations and you have to bring, bring variety. Mm -hmm. If you post motivational memes all day, every day, you become dull as anything because that gets boring and people get immune to it. So you have to be new things. So I will do things like I'm, I'm asking for opinions and or I'm asking for people to share something. I'm always looking for where, how do I start a conversation? And sometimes it might be that I do a giveaway. So here's a book I really like. Best answer to a comment gets a free copy or best comment gets $50. $50 is as much you can send people some money. And it's amazing. That's a good way of getting engagement. Everyone likes free money. So that tends to work as well. But that kind of thing helps a lot. But then, as I say, bringing variety. So every so often, about once every month or so, I, I will invite members to come and do their own live stream so they can share a bit of value to the members as well. And of course, all the entrepreneur business lives um, are free to watch. We stream the speakers from, so we had, you know, we'll be streaming New York again in a couple of weeks time, uh, exclusively in the group. So it's something to show up for, if you see what I mean. But, but deep down inside it, you have to be the hub. You know, you have to just not just curate the content, but you have to be pulling it all together. So you have to draw people in and, and invite them to have conversations because it just fades after a while. Otherwise, there's a lot of work literally every day. You've got to show up for it. Great stuff. So I hope my audience, uh, like I, I truly really enjoy being in that group. You know, I love all Thank the you. content. I love the engagement where we choose a topic every Saturday and then, then yes. you get to ask a question. And, you know, sometimes it's a burning question that we have. So thank yeah. you so much for uh, being in that group. So to my audience, so please join Richard on the Entrepreneur Business Group on Facebook. And uh, Richard, thanks for your time and uh, all the best for the rest of the day. And, and uh, uh, also, you know, go to Udemy and check out Richard's course on the basics of LinkedIn. Thanks so much, Bob. It's been a real pleasure. Right. Thanks, Richard.